Okay, hello, I'm back. I'm sorry if, um, well, technically it's not delayed because I don't specify a start time. But it took me a bit to get my computer to actually set up the way I want it to do live stream. But we are continuing our live stream of our life. And when I streamed last week was all I played of our life before. So the rest of this is completely new. I figured out how to get the DLC to show up. Um, So here we go. So, so far we have done one moment from step one. And as you can see, I can now select these other ones. But I'm going to finish with the ones we um, get as part of the game. And there's going to be an EOC for the last step. And they haven't announced when it's been re when it'll be released, but they are working on it. And I will have a link to the um, not only the base game but also to the DLC for Step One when I upload the video. And to YouTube, and if you enjoy. These questions of mine, I've got plenty more on my YouTube channel. Uh, generally speaking, I live stream every Wednesday around about 12 or after um, specific time. Um, basically, I just I live stream after lunch. But if I live stream in the evening, by the time it actually gets to the evening, I'm tired. I'm I don't want to talk, so I started live streaming in the afternoons, and it just works better for me mentally. Um, and if you watch these on YouTube, please uh, like and subscribe. I feel silly to say that, but um, this is fun. I'm I'm not getting any sponsorship for live streaming these. I'm doing these of my own volition and um, because I enjoy these games and I want them to get some attention. Um, that because they're not big, big star um, studios like EA or anything like that. But games like these deserve some love. So here we go. I have no idea how many of these we're going to get through. I don't know how long it's going to take to get through all of this. Um, maybe two at least. Perhaps more, we'll see. So grown up. When sweltering, I can talk really. When sweltering summer day, you were in your living room with Co, listening to the sounds of the birds chattering outside the window while you lay across the rug on the floor. Co's dad had dropped him off earlier, and your mom took left the two of you along with Lucy to play amongst yourselves. It had been too hot to go outside in the afternoon, and you were exploring the mommy, and your sister was starting to get impatient waiting for her bus class that evening. The three of you had had trouble finding something fun to do. The beach and the playground were off limits, and you felt that it was too warm for anything like playing with your fuzzy toy animals. Then suddenly a light came to Lizzie's big brown eyes, and her smile spread wide across her face. Having an idea gave her a new wave of energy. Since we're stuck inside, we should be adults. They don't play outdoors anyways. They're always inside and telling everybody they're too busy to play. Maybe I did play this one. Sounds familiar. Why? <laughs> Duh. I said why, and it'll be fun. Duh. What do they do inside that we don't? Besides, you the own a lot. If you're in a small house, Lucy decides to throw a toe. What do you do think? You, what do you think? Do you want to? Uh. Hmm, I'm 
I'm going to turn this first here. Hey, don't pull the dice out. I don't crap it. Here we go. Craft to be four. So one or three first option, two or four second option. I don't care about this other two. Two. That's what I'm going. To, that's what I'm going to do. It's not something I play pretend adults by myself. Oh, she's one of those kids. You do that a lot? What's it to you? Look at Lizzie. It seems to have felt that he could understand where she was coming from, and he sighed. You really not want to play, Julia. I swear he wanted some way out. So I felt guilty about it. Um, fine, whatever. Play by yourself. Just don't be loud. Me and Cove will do it ourselves. It's decided. Look back at you regretfully. I guess. I guess. Hm. Now give back to the two of them. You trail us. Find something else to do. Like you promised, Cove stay put with Lizzie. Like he promised, Cove stay put with Lizzie for the next couple of hours. Well, you. Um... You could hear them talking as you raced your room to take the pillows and blankets from your bed. When you went back downstairs, you also took a couple of cushions from the sofa, found a spare blanket in the hallway cupboard. The dining room was the perfect place for building a fort. When you pulled out the chairs and covered them with blankets, you had plenty of room beneath the table to do whatever you wanted. You had just gathered the pills inside the fort to make it more comfortable when you heard Lizzie and Cove's voices again, and this time they were much louder. Here's about what was happening, you craned your neck to hear them better. Of course, you mostly only picked up on Lizzie's high-pitched shout and giving orders to Lizzie and Cove what to do, yelling about sports and the Olympics. That was pretty typical for Lizzie, so there was nothing new there. But then I started hearing Cove more and more as time went on. That was like they were having a very good time. Uh, I can't just abandon him. I have to go check it out. You abandoned your post board to go check what was happening with them. Hey, is something wrong? From up close, you can see that your sister was red-faced and pouting, while Cove mostly just looked confused. Neither one paid you mind. Oh. You're being so unreasonable, you... you... I don't get what you want. This game doesn't make sense. Just, it, it does. You have to be realistic. I said that. But you're not. I'm worried that the two of them were getting a little too angry or whatever it was. You had no idea what to do to make them stop at this point. It seemed like the two of them would just keep working each other up as long as they could. Had the two of them been arguing like this the whole time? Thankfully, like a greeting third angel, Mom walked into the room. Lizzie rushed to her, hanging onto the hem of her shirt and poking at her tug. Hanging it go. Lizzie, Julia, it's time to get ready to go. You alright with that? Sorry, you have to leave already, Cub. But Mommy said she'll walk you home so you won't be left in the cold. That is not cold. Cub was still going at Lizzie, her face flushed red with anger. I can go by myself. But. Bye. Bye, Julia. It was still a harsh edge to the brief farewell, but you know it wasn't you he was mad at. Without giving Mom a chance to stop him, Cove stood up and stalked out of the room, shoulders drawn tight. Huh? Okay? Worry, Mom turned to look down at you and Lizzie. But you were playing nice with their new friends, weren't you? Uh... That's all the truth. We were playing pretend and things got intense. They were like cats and dogs. The sister's jaw dropped, looking betrayed, as Mom put both hands on her hips. Elizabeth! Oh no, the full name. Not the nickname, the full name. I want you to be kind to him. He's having a hard time right now. As his mouth closed back up, replaced by a tiny frown. You know, I tried, but he was. No, but you both know you can show someone a great time when you put your mind to it. 
We're going to apologize to cover his dad over the phone when he gets home from work tonight. With the hungry head dragging his foot across the ground in front of us. Okay, Mom. Good girl. In fact, she says she's looking close into herself about how it was his fault, too, but it was over. All right. Uh, right. We better get a move on. Let's go. No, Annie, where did you leave the car keys? I'm helping you all out the door. He has to the car right to the but this is much quieter than usual. She's usually the first one to request which music to listen to in the car. She didn't say a thing. The first time, she wasn't in the mood to be bothered. We don't get to choose what we listen to. Whoever's driving picks the music. So, when we were younger, Mom would put on a radio station that we liked. Dad would always play whatever, whatever, would listen to whatever he wanted. He gave her space, and Mom would just ask you what you'd like to listen to. That's all the next choose. Okay. Now, D6, so 1 or 4, first option, 2 or 5, second option, 3 or 6, third option. Where is it? There it is. 3. You were happy to see it bring her up right away, and she starts me along with you. You and I provide my with something in the past. When the car ride was over, we spent the quiet hour watching with you hit things with the other girls her age. You didn't know much about golf, but you could tell that she really liked it, so you talked to your mom to try to puzzle it out. It was nice sitting outside after being cooped up in the house all day, and you stretched out your legs for the last few minutes of sun warm your skin. When the sun was running out of sight, the thing behind the horizon, you all got ready to leave. Instead of going straight home, your mom took the family out to dinner. You went to a restaurant you had all been going to ever since you could remember. Earlier, you'd only caught the tail end of your sister's argument with Cove, but you could kind of tell that all this had to let Lizzie be less angry. The car ride home was quiet, with only the radio providing escapes and silence. Lizzie had been in better spirits now, but the closer you got to your neighborhood, the more she wiggled in her seat and frowned out the window. She knew what was coming when you all got back home. Clearly, she was dreading it. Soon enough, Mom was turning onto your street and reversing into the driveway. When she cut the ignition, it was dead silent. My dad backs into the driveway. We can only tell when dad's the one who parked that car because it's always back into the driveway. The rest of us don't. No one spoke, only unbuckled their seat up and opened their doors. Lucy was the last one out. Once everyone was inside and done taking off their shoes, she popped her hands on her hips. So. Now, now then, Mr. Holden's car is in his driveway, so he should be back from work. That's good news, isn't it, Elizabeth? You and Coke can hash things out before the day's done. Lizzie didn't complain or put up a fight. We had duck so she didn't have to meet anyone's eyes. She nodded once. Good. Let's move this to the kitchen. I went over to the house, one, and the rest of you followed me behind her. Molly put a gentle hand on Lizzie's shoulder as they walked side by side. You watched them from the back. This was only happening because you told on Lizzie. Um, so I got a D4, so let's see. Uh, let's see. Four. You hadn't done anything wrong by telling the truth. It wasn't like Lizzie was going to say it on her own. The four of you stood around the kitchen in a lopsided square. All I saw him with you kept your gaze on her feet. Do you remember the number for Cubs house, don't you, honey? Lizzie jerked her head in another nod, so on. Without further prompting, she stepped forward and she began to dial. Mom reached over and pressed the button on the base. Suddenly you could hear the phone ringing. She turned on the speaker. The phone rang a couple of times and stopped. Mr. Holden's warm voice came through the other end. Evening, Holden rested. As he looked over at Mommy, unsure, she nodded encouragingly. Aww. Hi, Mr. Holden, it's from Lucy. Can I talk to Cove? 
absolutely. Does he hunt? What a surprise. But of course you can say hey to the boy. It's kind of cheery as usual, but definitely meant it when he said it was a surprise. He thought hard, and you're sure that your sister had never called Coach House before. Mom spoke up before Mr. Holden or Lizzie could say anything more. Her arms were crossed over her chest, her lips pursed. Hi, Cliff. No, Lani. Julia and I are here, too. Good evening. We're sorry to bother you so late. Hey, Mr. Holden. Gang's all here, huh? Is something the matter? The voice grew a bit concerned. I only was quick to reassure him. Mm. Eh, well, yes, but it's going to be okay. The Jinx have gone to a bit of a fight today. We were hoping that the two of them could talk and make up. Is this a good time for you and Cove? What? A fight? Cove didn't tell me anything about that when I came home. It does explain the punk he's been in tonight. He chuckled lightly. Despite that, it didn't seem like he really thought it was funny. Um. Anyway, it's good. You didn't catch us at a bad time. I'll go grab him for you. There was some shuffling on the other end. He must have he must not have gone far, but you could still hear him calling out. Oh, there's someone on the phone for you. After a beat of silence, there was more muffled talking from Coke's dad. Come on, bud. Lizzie called just so she could talk to you. Right. Who's on the other end listening too? Don't you want to say hi? It took a bit of back and forth, but the conversation seemed one sided because you couldn't hear Coke properly. Eventually, Cove took the phone from his dad. Hi. Uh, hey, it's Lizzie. Yeah, I know, Dad told me. Cove's so tone was defensive. Lizzie turned to Mom, scowling. One student looked from her bow, and Lizzie turned away. The Mom look. I'm sure we're all familiar with it. You know that look, and it doesn't have to be from the Mom. You can get it from the Dad, too, or any other guardian. It's that look that you know. You better do this. You know what's right. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Either. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Come on. Lizzie's eyes were downcast, her voice low. You could tell she felt uncomfortable with some of the to be cope in front of everyone. There's still being genuine about feeling bad. Cope must have realized that too because he's. quietly. Okay, I guess I'm sorry too. A sense of relief washed over everyone at his acceptance of the apology. Mom uncrossed her arm, so Mommy's shoulders relaxed. Lizzie's eyebrows raised up. I wondered if she thought that he'd refuse her apology. Dad, can I get off the phone now? You couldn't see him, but it was obvious that Cole felt awkward about the situation. He'd come off uncomfortable the entire time, really. Yes. Yeah. You can go back to your room if you want. Be sure to say goodbye first, though. Um, bye, Lizzie. Bye. I don't think it's my computer. I think it's my connection. The Twitch video is... Yeah. Come on. Bye. Hi, Julia. 
The first step was to mention your name. You smiled even if you couldn't see it. Echo. But that said, Echo must have handed the phone back to his dad and left since Mr. Holden spoke up. That's a relief. I will pull it in until I actually say, thanks for arranging this. I'm sure he appreciates it. As mom replied, when she tugged on mommy's hand to catch her attention. Can I go now, too? Good job. Here, here, sweetie, thank you very much for apologizing to so. Mom passed a brief smile at Lizzie and nodded her agreement. Given permission to leave, Lizzie screwed off for the stairs. She seemed to be feeling much better with the incident behind her. Mom and Mommy returned to the phone, taking it off the speaker. They continued talking to Mr. Holden. We didn't tell what about. We were glad that was the end of it all. Lizzie and Cole might not get along, and probably still won't, but they weren't mad at each other anymore. Mom and Mommy weren't upset either. Everything was finally back to normal. With that thought, you were treated to your own room with a spoon in your step. Okay. So, that was... I don't know how it was. Because, um, which restarted because something happened with that connection. Um, maybe half an hour? Okay. Yeah, we'll just keep going until my voice goes. It, it was another scorching summer day. The kind where no sooner had you finished one cup of water, you were already filling it up again. Yes, been there. I don't live by the beach, but um, where I do live, it gets very hot and it's very dry. So I definitely drink a lot more water when um, during summer than I have um, the past few months. Everyone else is something on. So that afternoon, it was just you and Shiloh. This didn't happen much, especially since Philip had arrived. Without Lizzie around, Shiloh looked to you for all the answers. It made you feel... Please, frustrated. Nothing, really. Okay, Andy did that. One or four, first option, two or five. Second option, three or six, third option. Five. He was always wanting to hear what you thought instead of giving his own opinion and expected you to come up with plan. It was hard work, especially for such a fat day. He drained yet another drink and found out the empty vessel. The first was fun, but he still heard something icy cold and refreshing. Something sweet. Something like... An ice cream cone. An ice cream sandwich. Okay. One of us again, one or four, first option, two or five. Second option, three or six, third option, four. You wanted something fruity and brightly colored. There was nothing like that to be found at home. You knew that was how to look. You to keep sweets in the house. Outside, there were plenty of places where such goodies could be obtained, but there were shops and demanded payment in exchange for their price. Okay, one and again, same thing, one or four, first option, two or five, second option, three or six, third option, five. I want a popsicle. Shadow, who'd been draped, draped over the sofa, perked up. Yeah. That sounds good. I don't have anything like that in the house, and I don't have any money. Oh, let me check if I have any. Now Romans in his backpack and proudly produced an assortment of coins, plus one stray button. He set the button aside and counted the coins in neat piles. Just over a dollar, he announced it to Shiloh. He had almost certainly come to the same conclusion, but he'd been watching you expectantly. Okay. One or three. First option, two or four. Second option. Two. 
Okay. Tyler beamed at you. We'll need to find some more. Okay. The two of you looked at couch cushions, stuck tiny hands found deep crevices in the sofa and under furniture, and scoured the back of drawers. Most of what you found was useless or gross. Found paper clips, fluffy wisps of dust, or sandy crowns, but every so often one of you would strike silver or bronze and add it to the growing pile of coins. Don't stand disabled from checking every room and squinting into every tiny nook, as soon as you finish pulling your finds, Shadow held his breath as you counted the coins once again. Two dollars, fifty-three cents, and two buttons. You didn't know when the second button had decided to join the party, but you were pleased with your successful help start up. Um, is that a knife? You figured he knew the answer without looking for you for confirmation. But the thrill of your success and the reward that it would follow can't without any other feelings you may have had it about that. Yeah! You could never afford something at the shop, just one thing, but that was definitely better than none. Shadow clapped his hands. Yay! The two of you dashed outside. The promise of sugar boiled you on to your destination for a breathless but happy. He stared at the overwhelming number of options. You knew what you wanted, but it wasn't just you who had to contributed the funds to get the treat. You seemed to notice your pause. Weren't you getting a popsicle? Daryl asked as though he was entirely separate from the decision, rather than coming with a stake in the outcome. Do you mind? Daryl caught his head to the side. It was your idea. You should choose. Um, okay. Here we go again, and I roll in the dice. Same options as before. Two. Yeah! You? Really? You see, bought the dessert you'd long for. Sweet success. Five of reward for all your hard work was in your hand. You suck on the pretty pops though you bought. I see treat pulled you down perfectly and the zesty flavor was refreshing. He held it out to Shiloh so he could take a turn and he shook his head. He could finish it. He didn't want any? After everything he did to help get it? That was weird. Okay, here we go. Five. Even if Shadow said it was okay, every story you'd ever seen on TV or read in a book said that sharing was caring. You stood your ground, even as the treat started to trickle dangerously towards your fingers. It seemed like that you had some. We both bought it. But you want it more than I do, and getting to play was a lot of fun. Alrighty, so you can have it. That's more fair. You held it out to him. I want you to have some even more than I want to finish it, so eat your part. Relenting Shadow took the treat and gave it a taste. His eyes lit up. Thank you! Really good, thank you. He smiled, pleased with your good deed. You picked the best one. Did he mean that? Show was always nice no matter what happened. Even if he hated it, you knew he wouldn't say so. Maybe he thought it was gross and that's the real reason why he didn't want to take them. You had no idea. Beside him as he ate a little more. He had every appearance of enjoying himself. Still, still weird. Until he began to head back home as he ate. Left side by side on the shore in silence, but your thoughts kept drifting to the boy beside you. Why he didn't speak up for himself? It was almost as if Shadow didn't know how to say what he felt or was too afraid to. Okay. So we're not going to pick the first option. So, um, one or four, second option, two or five, third option, three or six, fourth option, one. Shadow so opened his eyes wide, seemingly caught off guard by the blunt question. <gasps> no way! So you don't tell me things like what you want to do or what treat we should get? It's not because I'm scared, it's because you have better ideas than I do. Fortunately, this was yet another thing you couldn't entirely believe Shiloh on. You hoped it was true and that he really did feel okay around you, though. So I made you unsure about setting the label and the experience of spending the afternoon with Jeff Penn. There had been a good times and there had been confusing ones. We positive one thing, at least. The treat was delicious, and that was nice. The sun was low in the horizon as you returned to your neighborhood. There you saw two very familiar figures at the head, Izzy and Coase. 
You open your mouth to make your presence known to them, just as you saw the tears on Clove's face. Walk straight over, shallow at your heel. Once there, you... Uh, let's carefully act. That time machine, the only you're going to find out was by asking the witnesses. Lucy might have done something, but she could have been in the wrong place at the wrong time, or even come to Cove's aid. You wanted to hear the story. Oh, what happened? Julia, I got yelled at. She took a deep, steadying breath. My grandparents got mad at me. Aww. Sorry. Lucy jerked her head in the direction of a nearby house. I knew exactly what had happened. Every year, the same mean old couple rented out that condo for the summer. You lived in Shiloh and you'd stay away from them, but so couldn't have. So like that with everyone. Even your mom struggled to find anything nice to say about them. But the elderly pair particularly took offense to kids. It didn't matter if they were really nice like so. Yeah, Lizzie said. Lizzie drew herself up at that. She looked and pointed me in your direction. Uh-huh. I was helping. That's cool. Is there anything I can do? No. No. I'm just gonna stay away. Or you could teach them a lesson. There's a devilish blend in her eyes. What? You should ding dong ditch them. Go ring the doorbell and run. It'll be great because they're so slow. They'll never catch you. That's dumb. I don't want to go near them ever again. You're just you're... saying that because you're a frack, frack, frack chicken. Go so clear, but don't take the bait. Let me turn to you. You're not a chicken, are you? Nope. You looked at the house behind those closed doors like two beings rich in years but poor in patience. Maybe they deserve retaliation. Maybe they didn't. But that punishment wouldn't be coming from you. It was safer to stay far away from them, especially since Cove took their outburst to heart. I'm not doing that either. Another chicken for the coop. This is a hen house now. If we're chickens, you're a lizard, Lizzy. She wagged her tongue at his face. Still better than a bird brain. Chicken! The condo door opened, revealing one of the two culprits. The old man's wife and face was set in a scale. Which was to say he looked exactly like he always did when he saw him. Maybe that was his normal face. What are you kids doing loitering outside my house? Or maybe he's always just in a terrible mood. Nothing! Nothing! Repeated the word as this was the greatest crime anyone could commit. Nothing good, more like, get lost. It wasn't as if he owned the space outside the house. Paul's eyes, still red from his earlier tears, were wide, and he thought it would be best to see the old man's kind. Lizzie took off with Shadow immediately trailing after her without so much as a glance back in her direction. So much for your friendship. You waved your arm at Paul, summoning him to follow you, and ran after Lizzie. The old man's hollers propelled you all from the street to the sanctity of the hill. Only once you were safe did you notice a stitch in your chest from the ache of your leg. You flopped down, the blades of grass pictured your face. Lizzie, who had taken the lead in the end, was already waving on the ground. Before you took a moment to catch your breath, you enjoyed the feeling of cold grass against your skin. Cove. Cove lifted his head. Told you there were mean grandparents around here. Cove rolled his eyes and decided it wasn't, this wasn't dismissive enough. Roll this whole body, body away from your sister. Lizzie chose to ignore his response and started chatting to Shiloh, who eagerly joined in the conversation. In the back of your mind, you knew you'd be second fiddle again to Shiloh once Lizzie came around. It always went like that. And it was fine. Shiloh could prefer Lizzie as much as he wanted to. There were other things to attend to anyway. He wriggled closer to Cove. He calmed down for the most part. It was inspecting a flower. Fingers pinched the stem and tilted the white petals towards him. That's Poppy. Cove glanced at you in acknowledgement and back to the flower. And the type of poppies on the hill have the name White, Lynn, and Poppy. Mom told me. He quirked a smile. That's funny. He ran a finger around the edge of the petals. It doesn't feel like claws. You need a lot of them to make anything. He nodded and released a delicate plant, evaluation complete. This is my favorite kind of flower, but I didn't know what it was called. Thanks. Oh boy, we got a lot. She turned. Um. 
small smile and looked up at the darkening sky. The blanket of clouds reminded you of a thick bag of curled under on cold rainy days. I wondered if the clouds would be as soft. They lazily floated on by, splitting from each other, merging and morphing into new shapes. Now the reason I picked Bluebell is because um my sisters and I um we, we plan to eventually get um a tattoo matching tattoos that have flowers that represent each of us. My twin loves roses, and my sibling loves um, lilies, and I like bluebells. So it would be a rose, a lily, and a bluebell. Um, we have a brother, and I asked him once what he would want us to include in the tattoo to represent him, and he has never given us an answer. So I think if we do eventually get the tattoo, it'll just be the three flowers. But I like blue bells because my favorite color is blue, and blue bells are pretty. And um, they were in Victorian flower language, they mean kindness. And that, I think, is what we need the most of. Need the most in this world is kindness. You saw a dolphin leaping through the sky. You guys pulled and pointed to it. Look, a dolphin! So joined you in gazing skyward. Oh, cool. He blinked. He blinked. Nice. Yeah, I see it. You? Mm. No. But I, I like dolphins. Hey, you chuckled at your reaction. As all the sun's light faded from the sky and the moon rose higher, Lizzie got to her feet, dusting strands of grass from her bare legs, and surveyed the surroundings. The ocean, visible from the crest of the hill, beckoned with every trace of the tide. Let's go to the beach! There was no argument from the other two, Shadow was still Shiloh, and Toad would never say no to going to the shore. He was a child of the sea. You! Oh, if I was close enough that I could go to the ocean every day, or as often as I could, I would. My um, cousin got married um, at a hotel near the beach, and I loved it. It was amazing to be near the beach. It's been a few times, but it's a bit of a drive in the town. And it's a lot of gas, so we haven't gone very often, and we can afford to live closer. The beachfront um, property can be very expensive. So eagerly joined the others in descending the hill back to the water. He stepped onto the sand for the second time that day. It felt different at night. The beach was nearly quiet at this time. Sand and sand castles and footsteps from the sand, too big to go to any view, but the only indication of how busy it had been only hours earlier. The four of you kicked shoes off and in his socks and walked along the water's edge to wave past the tip of your feet. I wonder what would happen if you tried to take a bath in the ocean with shampoo and everything. That would be bad for the fish. Jeez. I didn't, I didn't say anyone would do it. Jeez, God would be serious about everything. You're the one who asked what would happen. That is what would happen. It hurt the fishes. Uh. I like bubble baths at home. They're a lot of fun. Me too. Bubble baths are luxurious. You've never heard Lucy use that word before. Mommy loves to have bubbles in her bath. She'll turn the lights off and have candles. I'm going to do that next time. Hey, when's your mom coming to the 
to screw up anyway. Not for a while. She's busy. Hmm. What about your dad? How can you ever talk about him? Nobody does. Don't you know you're not supposed to ask something like that? Why would somebody want to talk about something they never talk about? You kept your eyes on the ground, watching your toes get swallowed by waves. Even if Shadow never seemed that threat when this topic came up, it made you feel awkward just for having bothered your mind. It's okay, I'm like Lucy and Julia. I don't have a dad. Um, but I don't have two moms. I just have one. He's really great. Oh, sorry, I only have one now, too. My mom isn't here. She's back home. It's just my dad with me. Sorry. I never had a dad or anything, so I don't feel bad. It's really sad that your mom is gone. So nodded. Yeah. Hope couldn't much of a response. I don't think he truly disagreed, though. His eyes broke with a splash. If Lizzie kicked in your direction, cold water on bottom, and started against your leg. Lizzie could go foot so all fresh from the kick. So joined in, striking the incoming waves to make a splash of his own. Shell scurried out of close to his own with a grin. Uh, we're gonna retaliate. You use your foot to snag the water pulling around you, sending an arc of sea foam flying back onto your sister. She laughed as she spluttered, some of the salty seawater having landed in her mouth. She sighed it out. Yuck! Izzy chased her intent on revenge. He dashed up and down the coast, taking an turns to be the predator on the prey, as well as throwing forces to take down Shiloh or Cove. The lion chased her silently forward, stammering the sea broken. Everything was fair game in a war. Ah! So his reflex from nature was drowned out by the biggest splash yet, caused by him falling face first onto the ground. It would have been bad enough without the weight that followed kept standing over his prone body. Shadow got up, shaking his head like a dog, coming in from the rain, as you all hurried over to check on him. The pair was clasped into his head and his coat closed tongue. If there's any part of him that was still dry, you couldn't see it. Huh. That was creepy. Are you okay? Yeah, I thought got stuck and I fell over. Way to go, Shadow, you dumbo. Let's help him up. Shadow didn't like to take your ass stretched hand after a moment you dropped it. But he was too busy sniffing to notice and held her hand out to Shadow too. He reached over and took it. Slowly, he started to pull himself on the ground. Then he clicked on the slick sand, dragging him and Lucy down just in time for another wave to hit. The water rolled over them. Uh, sorry. What were the odds of that happening twice in a row? You think they must be low. But there's no way Shadow would do something like that on purpose and pretend it was an accident, especially not to Lucy. Even if your relationship with Shadow felt unclear, he did at least like her a lot. Lucy was his favorite, right? Smiling boldly, Lucy extracted his and wiped a streak of sand from her cheek. She didn't intend to let this embarrass her. Hang on. I need to plug my headphones in. Okay, they're charging. Shadow got up again as well, this time without incident. It still looks like a drunk puppy, but that is that cove whacking at the two of them. With that, it was time to call it a day. Before you made the journey back home, leave it a trail of wet footsteps and sand in your wake. The young clothes may have weighed down some of the group, but your spirits were high. Your own arms swung side to side as the cool breeze filled past. Your moms were outside, chatting to close dad. We're back. Your mom's face is so the type of state you all you all were in, ranging from messy to soaked. Now to <laughs> Elizabeth, is that all you had to say for your life? You brought half the beach back with you. You certainly did. What's Marivon going to do when she comes to get Charlotte? Is that how you want to be for the long drive home? Cold and silky? Elizabeth's expression turned silky over the scolding. Being the oldest could be fun, but it also meant she was the first to get in trouble when something went wrong. Mr. Holden, on the other hand, chuckled as he ruffled close batted hair. <laughs> You've been out making memories, Buckle. I'm glad you had a good time with it. So he used his slightly moist cow back and pushed his dad off. Mr. Holden's eyes widened when he knows that even that he got wet had gotten wet. Now he was worried, too. I think they could have found a less risky way to spend time and had just as much fun. 
you have to use your own method. It didn't take long for the three of you each to have to each have humble structures prepared. It's all kind of you can do anything now. Like make it bigger, add some seashells, have a pretty pattern. I bet you'll have great ideas. Okay. I'm gonna make it bigger. Mine is gonna be a real passion. Cool. This is gonna be a hack. You can space in your sandcastle you decide to make uh, a castle. You can space in your sandcastle you decide to build a fancy castle. The better part of the next hour was that focusing on your own work. The boys were the same. Even Shadow didn't sneak as many peeks that everyone else could see, you she did. She kind of shaping you for either of them to glancing up from what you built. Since you got done so fast because they already searched around for, for extra decorations. That would have grabbed most of the really interesting stuff. We could have had a lot of the shelves, but there were still options. First thing you read for was a... Ooh. It's the best fit for a castle you decided. Yeah, my sibling and I got my twin a, um, a necklace. With the blue sea glass. The person who made that we bought it from is there on Etsy. And they make, they must, I think they live in Hawaii and they make all kinds of stuff with sea glass. And it looks amazing. So see through and sparkly. They put it in a bunny place where I took a second look to see it. This is your result. You finally took a proper look around that wasn't supposed to show in the stand itself. Those Cobra and Shadows seem so good in their inners, so you need to probably think of things that either one's work. The castle Cobra built looked surprisingly tidy, especially for someone in a cat. It must have worked really hard. It wasn't even supposed to dig in a huge kid's moat in front, but it was already enormous. You got the sense from the enthusiasm he was digging with. The doctor's probably going to find a bunch of sand when he's going to remove the piece of plaster. The balance is unbroken. What's on top? What's on the top of your Shiloh? Peek close and discover something shiny is sticking out of Shiloh's sand chimney. Hey, it's just a gun wrapper. It looks like smoke. Neat. It's good. That's smart. You really know a lot about this. And smile smiles without a word. I'm not with that, for the current time. Julie, can see what you did? Sure. You stood just a bit nearer and began surveying your work. That's what you built. It's pretty impressive, I think. Considered the archway, tall walls, and even little moat tricks in it. You probably feel safe living there, making your mom sure to clean. Shadow quickly decided to jump in the new conversation. Hey, Julia, what did you do? This is my castle. Shadow didn't look so happy anymore. Both built castles? Yeah. That's neat how you guys match. It's too bad we didn't all do it. Next time we should. Wouldn't that be boring? Something is the only one of that thing. That makes it special. Yeah, the sand castles and stuff. People too. My dad always says how everyone, everybody has their own match. A real individual. Um, you don't think I'm very special. Why? Why not? Nobody else is you. Shadow completely shook his head. I'm not different. A beat passed between the two. Cobden looked down at his own work again. Hmm, okay. He didn't seem to be bothered making the disagreement hanging there. Cobb had other things on his mind. My dad tried to get me to make time conscious the first time he came to this speech. Ah. I didn't want to. So he trailed off. Again, this was another moment of silence. Now we shifted and opened his mouth to say something. But Cobb spoke up before he could. I didn't think he knows that Charles was going to talk. Hey, do you know what happened when your mom took my dad, Julia? I made to see if Shadow would say what he wanted to, but I didn't consider Cove's question. I wasn't there. They didn't tell me. I just remembered what happened when I met your dad. Mr. Holden had been a weird stranger then. Oh, he was still kind of strange. No other parent acted like him. But you knew him better at this point. Now that you thought about it, it made a lot of sense that Cove's dad talked to him about people being unique. We were pulled from my thoughts when Cove continued. Oh. Well, I was there. I didn't think my mom had sent your dad. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she hasn't. Julie's parents and my dad met the same day I met her. I'm gonna say what happened. 
Joe Franz went from second in his head. His hat cast a shadow over his face. You could tell he was upset. You could still tell he was upset, not being included in post choice of topic. It was kind of boring for him, though. Giving people their own turn to say the things they want is important, too. Okay, we were talking just right now. I'm talking to you. You can listen. His expression barely flickered at the word. Words. He still looked put off. So continued like the interruption hadn't happened. He was determined to tell the tale. We moved here. We didn't bring a lot of things with us. Only some stuff that was in Dad's car. She didn't even get a moving car. I sat in there while Dad brought it on his side. I didn't want to get out because I knew Dad would make me look around in a new house. I really didn't want to do that. It shifted into a frame as you were called back. Then I saw your mom. They were in a car too and stopped at your house. I guess they're coming back from somewhere or something. My dad noticed. He waved his hand then went over the, to the front of your house where he started talking to them. I don't know what they said. I couldn't hear it. But he couldn't see me anymore so he was looking the other way. They opened the car door and left. I wanted to get away and went behind the house. The problem was he'll The ones where we met for the first time. Hmm. I have not been stared at you. I stared back. I didn't go on to say anything more. Uh, I'm going to finish your story. His brow wrinkled like he didn't understand why you were surprised. Huh? That's all that happened. Okay. What is it? What? You said that in a weird way. I don't think I did. I was mirroring the guy that used suspicious. He was not just an undisguised disbelief, but he said nothing. Why'd you bring a dad up anyway? It was a slight shrug of those shoulders. Wow. I'm thinking about it because of the sand castle. It made me remember when I moved here. Dad showed me the beach first before he went back to the car to unpack. He was really excited about it for some reason. Poe's brow furrowed a little more as he quietly reached his hands to his dad. I get it. I thought maybe Mr. Holden wasn't that excited about the beach. I was instead hoping Poe might be. The only conversation had come to its end. Even Cove was done with it. Some other topic had popped in his head. So I looked like being uncomfortable in the sand had made Cove aware of his presence again. They looked at each other and could only wonder what this might be about. Hey, Shiloh. Yeah? Why are you always turning so red? You wanted nothing is happening. Really startled to jerk back. Either you or Shiloh had expected that to be how he got included in the conversation again. I don't know, I guess. Okay, that's kind of weird. Now I was surprised with embarrassment and both switched. He's flushed me even harder than before. I knew it wasn't with this. Perhaps I think it was the last drop, but it was almost a big deal. But it was a big deal to show. Huge deal. I didn't just look bad. It was almost panicked. We weren't sure if his boss cried or what the land was, but he soon got an answer. Why do you wear glasses? Most kids don't wear glasses, and nobody is named Cove. Who asked you to come? It was probably just your dad hugging you with his family tomorrow, and we don't have anyone else who will ever play with you. Um. Um. So blink. The tension on the beach was suddenly so uncomfortable in a way you didn't know how to laugh off. It didn't seem like the kind of thing he'd get upset about. So you had never known that boy was known what kind of thing would bother <sighs> I'm sorry. Me too. I was just wondering. You picked up some sand and turned it over in your hand, but there didn't seem to be much you could do to stop the fight, and you weren't sure what to do with yourself. I looked over at what you were doing and tried to build his own set of walls. So I took a breath before moving back down to his own patch of sand. Then they both decided to try playing again. You were glad for that. So I went back to making more sand buildings, but the whole mood had changed. Shadow Sureness was clearly gone, and Cove was as confused as ever about why the other boy had blown up. They were sitting home to build the rest of the afternoon, and the Shadow's mom was here to the beach to take him home. Cove and Shadow had mostly followed your lead and barely said a word. His mom standing behind him, even Shadow's goodbye had been quiet, and me cheerful, but miserably quiet. When the sun going down, he knew it was time for you and Cub to head to your own houses. The two of you trailed out of the park together toward the neighborhood. The walk home was quiet. You passed by familiar landmarks, shoes, something against the sidewalk, and near a purple unison. 
So it was really kind of comforting that something. He shrugged your shoulders and kept going, watching Tom out of the corner of your eye. But a minute or so later, he spoke up anyway. Hey, Julia? What? Go so fine again for a few more seconds inside. Watch out! Of his shoe in the ground. He looked awfully vulnerable for a second. My dad made you hang out with me. You might talk to your mom about that a lot. The uncomfortable weight fell in your chest with the question. You watched the same time with Coke. You didn't even have to think hard about it. You knew you did. But you couldn't help feeling guilty. So still didn't, so still didn't know what happened when you met Mr. Holden. We're going to tell him the truth. Well, remember how you talked about how our parents went and I didn't know what had happened? Yeah. I have had something happen that you don't know about when I met your dad. He you struggled to find the right words. Cove looked at you passively. You wanted to turn away, but you searched your eyes on his as you spoke. I was walking home and your dad was sitting in front of the house. It must have been after you ran away. Their moms weren't there either. I think they were looking for you. Your dad saw me, he got up and came over. Mr. Holden told me that he had just moved into the house next to mine. Cove was still listening, his expression as plain as before. He paused for a moment, wondering if he should really keep going. I'm the full story here. And if it was supposed to be a secret, you thought Cove should still know. Your dad thought that you might be lonely here, so he wanted me to be your friend. He said he'd give me $20 if I did. Cove was so still he thought he hadn't heard you. His eyes widened. His mouth fell open, but no sound left him. Fine stretched between you, so tense it was almost tangible. You shifted from one foot to another, and your hands tensed up. Please say something. Without speaking, he closed his mouth. His eyebrows bent up, crinkling his forehead. He looked more sad than surprised now. He was going to cry. You were certain of it. I didn't take it. The money. I didn't want it. Honest. He raised his hands and brought them up under his glasses. His fingers pressed over his eyes. Hiding them from your sight. Then, right in the middle of the street, tears began to fall. His shoulders shook with the force of his sobs. You could glimpse wetness through the cracks of his fingers, slipping down his cheek. Well, it's okay. He tried to reduce the distance between the two of you. The co shook his body from side to side, projecting your presence. No Go away! Clenched up the shower. As you stood there, listening to him cry, you felt. concerned. You didn't want Coke to get this, this upset. You just wanted to be honest. Coke continued to weep with his face covered by his hands. Worse, his voice was his divine, you were close to him fight. The situation was awful, and he kept feeling worse every second. Spoke earnestly. It was all you could do, and it wasn't enough. You heard a door opening, and you flinched, expecting to see one of the meal grandparents referring themselves to yell at you. This hour, most people weren't around, either because they were working or down in the town. The grandparents really went to hang. They complained at children making noise in the street. You didn't want Cove to have to deal with that right now. You tried to come up with something you could do for him, for the situation, for anything. But the door lifted open now, didn't belong to the grandparents. To your utter surprise and relief, it was Cove's own. Dad was already home. As he peeked out of his door, Mr. Holden momentarily looked unsure. Perhaps he had suspicion from the noise outside, but wasn't entirely positive. So, a kid crying is pretty distinct, and there aren't a lot of kids. Maybe he didn't want to believe something might be wrong with his son. His face follows his father's face with a commotion. It was pained, and it was scared, and it reminded you of the one he wore in the first night you met Cope. Mr. Holden didn't go down the steps in front of his house. He just jumped right over them and stumbled into a run. He skid to a stop before Cope, bent down on one knee, and then slowly cut Cope's teary face with his hands. What's wrong? What's wrong? Are you hurt anywhere? 
who continued to cry, unable or unwilling to talk about an explanation. Not to get hands from Co, Mr. Holden turned to you for an explanation, his eyes wide and imploring. He's asking if you made me hang out with him. He did, so I told Co why he wanted to give me money to be his friend. As he spoke, Mr. Holden's chest rose while he inhaled deep, a deep, shaky breath, culminating a gasp at your final words. What? Why? Why would you? He clenched his mouth shut, shaking his head, face his crying son again. No, it's my fault. I shouldn't have done something like that in the first place. Cast his eyes down, sighing. When he next spoke, it wasn't part of a competition anymore. Very loud well enough for you to catch his words. He was only a kid. Tears were still streaming down Cove's face. Finally dabbing, Mr. Holden wiped Cove's cheeks with a thumb, rolled his brows, and looked at the ground. When he next glanced up, his mouth was set with determination. Mr. Holden finally took his hands off Cove. He reached for his wallet. Confused, he started to lick the little rectangle that all adults seem to carry in some shape or form. It had been the source of all these problems. You were sure that Cove wouldn't want to be reminded of it right now. Mr. Holden was really of a different mind to you. He explicitly, inexplicably, oh, why can I not talk? Retrieved another $20 bill, rolled it up, and raised it to Cove's face. Cove's eyes were hidden behind the tightly, tightly clasped fingers, so Mr. Holden poked Cove's nose with the bill. Cove peeked between his hands and grunted as he saw what, you, what he had been fired with. Even if it was surrounded by slabs, you were just glad that something else had finally left Cove's mouth. Come on. Hey. Hey, Cove, can you stop crying? I'll give you this cash if you do. Cove dropped his hands from his face. It had already been red and wet with tears, but now his features were scrunched up in his scowl. Not for the first time, you questioned Mr. Holden's tactics. He had to use two hands, but Cove firmly shoved his dad's own hand away. But Mr. Holden just chuckled at Cove's reaction and tossed the money aside. It unfurled as it flew through the air, rising before slowly drifting to the floor. Mr. Holden took Cove's outstretched wrist and lowered them to Cove's side, stopping him from hiding his face once again. Cove's dad clearly wasn't going to let go. Having Cove turn his whole head away, tears began to roll down his cheeks as he glowered at the ground. You can buy a lot of cool things with that, but it can't do everything, can it? Cove didn't respond, not even to look at his father. Mr. Holden continued. Your old dad likes to make things nice for you with the money he earns. But you're smart. You know that I haven't really done anything. I'm sorry. I still make you sound upset, just like right now. I'm sorry. Cove sniffed the harsh line of his brows from Emily. Mr. Holden squeezed Cove's hands as he continued. Julia's smart too, right? Mr. Holden spoke in soft and guarding tone, and Cove continued to calm. You have nothing to worry about. Except for me. Mr. Holden chuckled, so pressed his lips together, mulling over his father's words. So the stream of tears had eased, drops still butted in his eyes, and threatened to spill out. I love you, son. So much. More than anybody else. Sometimes... Sometimes it makes me a little too hasty to see you happy, and I make it all worse. I really am sorry. Crunching his eyes tight, Cove nodded. When his eyes opened again, they were red and glossy, but there were no tears left on the precipice of his lower lashes. Aside from the occasional sniff, his mouth was back to his usual self. He swallowed. Okay. okay. So Cove had refused that when Mr. Holden's exact words. The sentiment seemed to be enough for his dad. He moved his hands up under up under Cove's armpits and hoisted Cove high into the air with a grin. Cove's hands were really fast, holding them back from falling off. Cove's lips were shut tight, all betrayed by the telltale smile in his eyes that he was trying hard to hide. Mr. Holden laughed, lowering Cove so that he securely pinned against his chest. Cove looked away, face angled to the ground. Now that his dad could no longer see him, he was allowing himself to smile. Mr. Holden might have missed it, but you didn't. Cove wriggled, pushing a hand against his dad's shoulder. Can I go back down now? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Holden set Cove gently on the ground, waiting until his feet found their footing before releasing his entire. I have to do something. Wait here. As Cove wandered away, Mr. Holden's gaze stuck to him like glue. He sighed, eyes down cuffed. It felt weird that you'd only been able to stand there while the event unfolded. You weren't able to fix it. I couldn't make him feel better. Don't worry about it, please. We don't need another tragedy today. He winked, and you weren't impressed. Hey, I mean that, the first part anyway. There's only so much you can do to try fixing someone else's mistake. He smiled sincerely at you. You've done plenty for Cove, just the fact that you were honest with him when his own dad wasn't proves it. That's a relief. Thanks for being such a good kid. I hope you'll keep spending time with the boy. 
As Lord was prone to resent some attempts to overturn, clutching the bill his dad had cast aside earlier. He cocked your head and coaxed dad raised his eyebrows. So looked at scribbled notes and walked over and held it out to you. I saw crying, but I don't want it. You can have it. He gave you a small smile. Behind him, Mr. Holden was still watching so closely. He was relieved. He shared the feeling. I was making peace with the deal that had happened behind his back. Shaking your head, you pushed the note back to code. I don't need it. But I don't want it. You were at a stalemate. Mr. Holden hummed softly. Tapping, tapping his head, gazed up at the wide sky as he pretended to give the conundrum serious consideration. I know. He plucked the bill from Cove and tore it right in two. You and Cove got the connection. Yeah, I can't do anything with it now. True, it won't work at the store like this, but now you can split it. Crouching down, he held up the pieces to you and Cove. Both looked at the two halves. Neither of you reached for them. It still has value as a keepsake and memory. And that's one of the most valuable things you can use money on. So, that sounds pretty good, huh? Maybe I'm getting scared. Rubicly Co stretched out a hand and took his hat. You took yours, ran your finger along the jagged edge of the bill. It's cool to think that no other night would share this exact same feature, the precise peaks and trust of the tear, except for Cove's, which would bear them in reverse. And to me, it did feel like there was value left in it. Mr. Holden stood up, stretching his arms out casually. Well then, it's about time for dinner. Me and the Red Rat need to be going in. You probably should too. I bet your mom's want to see you. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks very and much. Good night. And thanks, Julia. Father and son waved at you as you turned and dashed back home. The note clenched tightly in your hand. You felt lighter. That's the bad. Okay, my voice is getting tired here. So we'll save here. So if we. Um, three memories is good. So if we continue, if we do. Um, Three each time. That would be one, two, three, one, two, three. So another two weeks uh, for step one, and then we move on to step two and so on. Um, okay, so yeah, that's it for today, this week. And um, uh, let's see, sorry. So, there we go. So, this last one is going to be from one of the DLCs. Okay, so yeah, next week we will continue with this. And... It seems very likely that, um, it seems, yeah, that three, um, memories, or moments, I guess you, I should say, is what we can expect. And this is fun. And so, um, since I'm, mm, for um, Christmas Eve, um, actually, I'm not going to bother. Whenever you watch this, I hope you have a good day, week, if it's their holiday, happy holidays, whatever it may be. And, um, yeah. If you this on YouTube, please like and subscribe and make sure you turn on notifications to use your phone. Um, I will, there should be a link in the description to um, at least the base game. Um, I think if I'm going, I think I'll only do the link to the DLC if I actually play some of the DLC content. So since I didn't, there's not going to be a link to the DLC, but next time there should be. Um, so, yeah, I hope you have a good week and that uh, you will catch you later.
Bye.